Uh, I was just telling Cena that the because um, you live in New York, y'all's police chief resigned yesterday. Yeah. And it's the third person high profile <laughs> in the administration. Um, any comments, Eldroy Williams? You know, um, I'm going to reserve my policing thing separate, right? Because nothing that our current mayor believes about policing um, in terms of policy, in terms of direction, whatever, none of it is new to those of us who have known uh, the mayor or known of him uh, since his political career. Like he, he has not changed. What has happened is that he has a greater spotlight, obviously being mayor. Um, and so all of the things that he is saying, all of the policies, all of the, you know, control of like people elected me, you know, and people work at my, like all of that is like, there's nothing you can say or that has been said that would be like, oh, that's surprising. Mm. <laughs> like, you're not surprised at, mm-hmm. at all from that standpoint. Um, and I'm not going to pretend to know the inner workings of uh you know the former now former commissioner with the with city hall or whatever because i don't um but what uh i know that the mayor and his team need to get a handle on is this narrative that is now running out of their control of can he really manage the city mm. and and managing the city is not just you individually it is empowering the people that you choose to help you manage the city. And I think the narrative that he has now, um, not only from, you know, the press, but also from people is that what's like, are you focusing too much on you being the one in control and not on how can I really manage this bureaucracy you know, of this, you know, with millions of people and various agencies and things like that. So I I think they, that is getting, that is out of control and it's um, up to them and and the mayor to sort of gain control of that. Cause there are some good things happening that get overshadowed because of this distraction. Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, uh, New York is a great city and some amazing people in New York and they don't deserve this. They don't deserve this. And they deserve healthy policing. They deserve a real strategy around dealing with folk who are unhoused, people with mental illnesses. They deserve to have a great education system and people that care about the future of children. They deserve better than what they're getting. And I do believe a lot of this is ego. And there's so much ego permeating all corners of politics, even why people run. Like, I don't even know why, why you run if it's a stepping stone. Like, if you don't really care about the city, which is why when I look at Maryland, I see a man who cares about Maryland. I see a man that cares about the people of Maryland. He's always in them streets. He's always with the people. I feel like even if his path is to the presidency, he's going to take care of Maryland before he goes there. And I'm yeah. talking about Westmore. But, but I don't see know, that many other places, Eljoy. Yeah, you know, well, uh, there's a lot of ego in politics. And so to, you know, and you need a healthy d- dose of ego even to step out one day and be like, I'm I'm going to be the one that's going <laughs> to run for, for mayor, governor, or even in a legislative body. Like it requires a, a, a at least some percentage of that to happen. But, you know, let me also mention, just in case folks are listening, and I know this does happening so sometime to offer my unsolicited advice as well is that we have often looked, um, uh, New York has been a way to highlight issues, particularly for urban cities, um, that are national conversations. And because we're caught up in the mix of what is happening with the mayor's administration and people leaving and sort of all that kind of stuff, what is missing that I think the mayor and his team do have a handle on, but are unable to lift up a voice on is the issues of the migration happening um, in places oh. is not just an issue that cities handle on their own. It requires um, coordination and financial support among others from the federal government. And if you have a um just being partisan for a second you have a democratic uh um president right and you have these areas that do have democratic led cities like 
leaving these cities on their own to handle a migration crisis, a, a migration immigration crisis is a catastrophe. And this distraction of, you know, management and people resigning and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, creates a problem that he and other mayors being able to consistently, because they have, you know, made some press about it in a conversation or whatever, but to consistently say, but like to the federal government, like this ain't our problem. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, we need the federal government to step in here because this is resources, right? And it then creates the further um, drama that is happening in communities on race, on ethnicity and economic insecurity, where people are like, oh, look, all these immigrants are coming in and they immediately get housing. They immediately get this and immediately get that. And we have people here in our communities who are experiencing street homelessness. So it creates that tension. That mm -hmm. is unfair to, you know, mayors, <laughs> you know, and states when it's the federal government that has to deal with that issue, right? Just be a civics lesson real quick. So, you know, th with those distractions, you are not able to have a Mayor Adams with a pulpit of being mayor of New York City to lead with other mayors and being like, we need to come to White House right. and we need to be seen in a meeting with you trying to figure mm -hmm. out how do we figure this out. I don't feel like he has the acumen to do that, period. I haven't seen that. So um, I hear what you're saying, Eljoy. <laughs> <laughs>